Mr. Ren, yesterday President Trump tweeted that he had a conversation with your president, Xi Jinping. The U.S. sees Huawei as being at the center of the trade war. How do you see it? Huawei does not have sales in the U.S. market, so Huawei has nothing to do with the trade relations between the two countries. Both China and the U.S. are like big balls, and Huawei is caught in between as more of a sesame, and we have no influence over the relationship of the two countries. But believe the U.S. is a country ruled by law. The issue between Huawei and the U.S. government will, we believe, will leave that to the court. And we will have every confidence in the court's conclusions. You may not get a big part of your business from the U.S. and you may not want to be part of the trade war, but you, as you said, have been caught in the middle. So do you have any hopes that when President Trump at the G20 potentially meets with President Xi Jinping, do you believe that Huawei will be a topic of conversation? I don't think we are that great. Those two great people talk. I don't think we will be a topic when those two great men talk. I don't think that's likely. That hasn't been the case, though. President Trump spends a lot of time talking about Huawei, as do other U.S. officials. They're in good health, so they're not tired. Excuse me? I'm not sure I understood that. Because they are full of energy. They must have a lot of things they are concerned about, and they are in good shape, so they have the energy to focus on a lot of issues. I think our role is exaggerated by them, and I don't think we deserve such a high attention on us. You may not think you deserve high attention, but the fact is that in the U.S., a lot of politicians, President Trump included, spend a lot of time talking about Huawei, your company. Do you pay attention to what he says? Maybe it's because no matter how hard they attack us, they still cannot take us down. And if they go on for many years, they must feel very tired, while we, the communication with the U.S. side, are carrying out on different channels. For example, by filing the suits in the court cases, it is also one way of communicating with them. In the court case, the U.S. should present their evidence and let the court decide whether there is any wrongdoing for Huawei. And the court should make the verdict. And that is the crucial thing here. Talking about being a chip in the trade talks, I, I don't know about that. And we are not willing to be that. You're not willing to be a bargaining chip. You may not be willing, but it doesn't change the fact that President Trump has said that you are a bargaining chip and the so-called attacks have already affected your business. You said earlier this week that they would hit your revenue by $30 billion. Well, this 30 billion U.S. dollars has little impact on us. This is not a big number. And this year, we are aiming to achieve more than 100 billion U.S. dollars. So it does not change our basically fundamentals of the company. We will streamline non-strategic business. So the measures taken by the U.S. side does not have material impact on the business. I think many people would call $30 billion material impact. It's nearly a third of your revenue last year. This affects your employees who are shareholders, does it not? This year's budgeted revenue is around 130 billion U.S. dollars. If 30 billion is impacted, then we can reach around 100 billion U.S. dollars. And the financial statement by May, I saw that we're still growing at around 20 percent. We expect to see some slowing of the growth, but we haven't seen that yet. But we are making adjustments internally. So we project there might be a slowdown. But till yesterday's report, I didn't see any slowdown. And we don't know what will be the growth by the end of the year, but we believe the 30 billion U.S. dollars will be a very small thing, and we can withstand that. We are not a public company. We don't attach importance to high numbers. We focus on the performance, the quality of the performance. Okay, let's talk about the quality of the performance and your fastest growing business unit, which is the consumer business, your smartphone business. You said earlier this week that smartphone shipments have declined by 40 percent. How does your business continue to grow if this fastest growing unit is taking a hit from what's happening between China and the U.S. and the U.S., as you call them, attacks on Huawei? For consumer business, because of the changes in the market, the 40 percent maximized decline was the number, was the highest number we had at one time. And the growth is picking up, and the decline is down to around 20 percent in overseas markets. So profit margin quickly recovering, climbing up. So once again, the impact on the consumer business is not a big one. It may not be a big one yet, although I think 40 percent decline in one month is significant. 
you are facing some pushback from international, your countries abroad where you sell them, Europe, um, the Americas. If this continues, where do you make up that growth? I don't see that problem. Because in the Chinese market, CBG business has not seen a decline. It's just that there might be declines in overseas. In the worst case, 40 percent. But now it's less than 20 percent. And that kind of decline is also shrinking. If you look at the declines in the CBG, that would be about 10 percent roughly. So it's not that big. And I would also like to say the profit growth is faster than imagined before. And I also criticize our financial department because the overseas carriers might not be able to buy from us. And they don't want to negotiate the prices, just buy directly. So that's my job, the profit growth. I don't want that to grow too quickly. And I think that when the finance department talked to me, they would have reported for several minutes only. And because it's much better than I thought. So I stopped them in their presentation. You may not think that $30 billion is a lot of money for all of Huawei when you have revenues above $100 billion, and you say that profit isn't the most important thing to you, but what about your employees who are shareholders and are paid through dividends that are based on the profit that Huawei makes? How are they feeling? Are you talking to them? Yeah, it's 130 billion to drop to 100 billion US dollars. Our employees are actually more hardworking and they are motivated. They don't want to lose and they definitely want to win. And we want to win in this balance of ban. And everybody, all the departments are confident. If you have a chance, you can also talk with our employees. Are you saying that your employees don't mind if profit decreases and their pay decreases? I don't see a decline. We won't change their salary, and the salary structure will not be changed. We are capable enough to pay them, and many excellent employees can be fast-tracked at this moment, too. If you look at long-term pay, we need to look at the financial statements at the end. It might be slightly lower, but it's one more than one time higher than I expected. So I stopped their presentation and said that you've earned enough. And I can care more about other departments, for example, the technical department. How can you be confident that it's only $30 billion that Huawei is going to be hit by because of the sanctions against you by the U.S.? How do you know that it's not going to be more? What happens if you lose access to Google's Android operating system? Google is a great company. We respect them highly, and we would not randomly replace the operating system provided by them. But if the time period is too long, we also have our own system that can replace it, and we will come back to normal. Will your customers accept that? Already in the Philippines, um, Huawei has said that it would offer a full refund if the device cannot run Google and Facebook apps. What if more customers demand this? I think in international markets, there has been some impact, but it's not that big. Because there are many functions in our smartphone that are independent from Google's systems. For example, photography and other core functions are independent of Android system. And Google has provided to us an excellent ecosystem which they have been bidding, real wall. It will influence us, but not too big. How can you be certain if customers are already saying that they don't want to use Huawei phones if it does not have the Android operating system? How can you be certain of this? You can see that U.S. is the greatest country in the world. It has the strongest state power, and now U.S. is attacking us in many places. And the customers are more and more buying from us. So you can see from the financial results of the different divisions of us, we don't have a big pressure that comes from this crisis. I'm sorry, Mr. Ren, my question was, how can you be certain that consumers will want to use the Huawei operating system versus the Android operating system? What makes you confident that this will not hurt your business more than it already has? I think if you say things are worsening, I think it, it's already worse. And if you talk about the future, I think things will improve. Think about this. We have more than 80,000 R&D staff and every year invest about 15 billion to 20 billion U.S. dollars into R&D. And don't you think we have our ability to address the issue of survival and development? This is the foundation of our confidence.
Mr. Ed, I'm sorry, I'm just going to ask you one more time. What makes you confident, though, that customers will be willing to use your operating system? Is it ready to roll out? And what happens if in mid-August Google is no longer able to supply the Android operating system? I don't think anything will happen. Some might not choose us, but others we do. One strategy that you are pursuing in the U.S. is stepping up licensing <coughs> of patents. Um, even that, though, is threatened now. Senator Marco Rubio is filing legislation that would prevent that. What do you think of what's going on in terms of your patent business and your ability to make up for some of the shortfall you're seeing right now through that means? First of all, U.S. is ruled by law. And it's also the country that has the largest amount of patents. If his recommendation can get passed through Congress, then will the image of the U.S. as a country ruled by laws, will it be damaged? It will be proved by history. I'm not going to have the say on whether it can be damaged. I know that you have a lot of admiration for the U.S. You have talked about it in the past, yet you're also a student of history, and you know that... Empires, countries, they can decline over time. What makes you have so much trust in the U.S. right now and so much conviction that they will treat you fairly? 200 years ago, U.S. was not as prosperous as today. And why U.S. can become the strongest country in the world is because of its openness, and all of the best talents move to the U.S. It has a robust ecosystem, and it protects innovations and personal wealth. And these are all reasons behind the rise of the U.S. And we do need to learn from the U.S. if we want to develop too. History is long. This kind of event does not represent U.S. in full. And we will also not change our belief because of some minor setbacks. When we were children, our parents also hit us when we were naughty spanked us, for example. It was just more than like a dozen seconds. We will not change our relationship with our parents because of these minor incidents. And this kind of attack is just a minor incident in the long history of the U.S. We don't know what the next U.S. president would think. You've said in the past, though, that number one breeds complacency. U.S. is the number one economy in the world. Does it risk becoming complacent? Is it complacent? It's possible. If it's not complacent, then it would not lag behind. The metaphor that you just used, that Huawei is similar to a child being spanked by their parent in terms of its relationship with the United States, is there a worry that the child could be hit too hard? Are you worried about Huawei's survival? No. I'm not worried, because adding us onto the entity list will cause us to streamline a long strategic business. We might have to cut or close some minor business in non-strategic business, but for the mainstream business, will not be impacted. You said that Huawei will see new life in 2021, that the pain from the U.S. attacks will be over. How do you get there? Does that assume that the U.S. export ban is lifted? Well, to use an analogy, we think Huawei is like an airplane riddled by bullet holes. And there are a lot of bullet holes on the airplane. But the engine is still intact. So while we are flying, we are repairing those holes. The plane is still flying. I'm not talking about U.S. lifting the sanctions. Instead, just we will prepare this plane so the plane can keep flying. What does that look like? How are you preparing? We stand prepared anytime, at all times. I asked, how are you preparing? I know you're developing your own chips. Is the ultimate goal to not rely on U.S. suppliers? Yes. I'm sorry, I may not be understood. How are you preparing to repair that airplane that you talk about? Well, we have to look at which hole on the plane is the biggest, and we will patch the biggest hole. After patching the biggest hole, then we'll come to deal with the smaller ones. Once they are all patched, we can fly. Two years from now, are you still buying the same amount of components from the U.S.? Maybe even more. They can't. For all these years, American suppliers have contributed to Huawei. If we do not buy from them when we can, then that will be a blame on our conscience. But, however, we are not to blame. Now, there is a restriction on us to buy from them. Actually, till today, we're still placing orders to American suppliers. They just 
those suppliers have to ask approval from Washington. If they get approval, we can still buy from them. If they don't get approval, then we have to find other ways. Are you able to find those other ways? Have you already put preparations in place? Yes, we are making preparations. What are those? A lot. Think about all those holes. We have to patch all those holes. The plane is riddled by bullet holes, thousands of holes. We have to patch each one of them. You're telling me that you will repair the plane, but you're not telling me how. Can you give me any kind of indication? And surely you have thought of this and put plans in place. Can I show you the picture of the plane? This is the broken airplane, riddled by bullet holes. We have hundreds, thousands of measures to patch those holes. We adopt different approaches to patch different holes. So it will be very difficult for me to explain. However, if you are interested in this question, you can go interview our grassroots employees and spend more time with them. They will tell you how we plan to patch those holes, because I do not specialize on patching those holes. And I do welcome you once again. Interview us after two years to see if we are able to grow. I would love to see that, but I'm very curious, and I still haven't received an answer or any strategy, really, in how you get there. Do you depend on other overseas suppliers? Do you start making the components yourself, which I know you already are, but to a greater degree, how does that happen? Well, both measures you mentioned are possible, but the most important thing is we have to enhance our capability. Okay. Are you hopeful that the trade talks between China and the U.S. are resolved? I don't know what's being mentioned or discussed in those trade talks, and we're not interested in that. We only focus on what's going on inside the company. And since the trade talk is a very wide-ranging topic, we don't know what's in the trade talks. Even if you focus solely on what you do, what Huawei does, you have been brought into the trade talks, according to the president, as a potential bargaining chip. And certainly America sees you as being in the middle. So if you do everything right, ultimately this, comes, this could come down to politics. Are you saying that you don't care if the trade talks are resolved? I think that is that sentiment only goes one way. Maybe they have us on their mind, but the feeling is not both ways. Have you spoken to President Trump or any U.S. officials? We don't need to, because they are such great men. How would they talk to a trivial man like us? In the Eastern District Court of New York, and also in a District Court of Dallas, we filed suits in those courts. So we are communicating in the courts. It's better to leave those cases to the court. If President Trump wanted to call you, and he did, would you pick up the phone? He would probably tweet first, and the White House spokesperson will speak first. What if some guy misguided himself as President Trump? Because I've never talked to him before. How could I know this is President Trump I was talking to? Let's imagine that it really was President Trump. Would you be willing to take a phone call from him? Of course, I would like to pick it up. We can communicate and achieve corporation, to achieve win-win, because information market is very big, and we don't know how big can it be. Let's work together to build and inform the society. We can all contribute, because U.S. is still very leading and advanced, and Huawei will only be able to be leading in a very focused area. However, on the wider scope, the United States is still the leading one. So we should work together to build and contribute the information in society. Have you spoken to the Chinese president or any senior Chinese officials about Huawei's role in the trade war and the so-called attacks that the business is facing? How would I have the chance to be able to meet with them and talk such a specific matter? And in China, Huawei is a very small issue, and on the table of the U.S. side, it is not even as big as a sesame. So it is not worthwhile to talk about our issues, and we will counter ourselves to address the issue. We still do trust the judicial system in the U.S., and we believe the judicial system will address the issue. Mr. Ren, how can you say this? You have 180,000 employees. You are one of the biggest companies, not only in China, but in the world. Why would it be strange to talk to Chinese government officials when you are such an important company to China and in the world? Because we are fully capable to deal with those issues on our own. Why should I ask help? We have full confidence and we have full capability to address the issues on ourselves. 
the sanction and also the entity lists that have been published for quite some time. And if you go around the campus, they wanted to invite you to go around the campus so you can see business is as usual. And maybe you can go to our product line and see the production line. Everything is in order. Since we have the full capability to address this by ourselves, why should I ask help? I didn't ask if you would ask for help. I asked if you would speak to Chinese officials. What happens to Huawei will affect the Chinese economy, will it not? Maybe not now, but if your business continues to decline, your revenue is more than that of Alibaba and Tencent combined. Then we should ask Alibaba and Tencent to work harder so they can step in to make more contributions to the country. We don't have pressure on our shoulder, and I think this time this issue is a test for us. If we weather the storm, then we will get stronger. So what doesn't kill you will get you stronger. In China, we say the phoenix will rise from the fire, and the bird that doesn't get killed by the fire is a phoenix. And we believe this big fire will address this issue at our hand, and we can get stronger during this process. I want to move on, but I just want to make sure that I'm very clear. You're saying that you do not talk to Chinese officials about Huawei's business? Imagine in a family there are two kids. One is the favorite kid, loved by both parents. But this kid will not grow into a very competent person. However, the ignored one will grow up into a very good person, because with too much love, the kid might lose capability on himself. And for the past 30 years, this is the path we've walked through. So we have very hard bones, and we have strong will. We, despite all the difficulties, so once again, we will get back on our feet. Despite all this pressure, and we'll be on our, we'll take measures at our own hands. And for those, for a lot of employees, as I mentioned, we have 180,000 employees. They are all doing the patching on the holes of the plane. If Huawei is a child, though, and the Chinese government is the parent, the child would be talking to the parent, would it not? I find it hard to believe that you don't discuss business with officials in the U.S. Companies regularly talk to lawmakers. This is because American companies are children who behave and when the U.S. government orders them to do or stop supplying to us, they obey. And we have been like naughty kids. So we are different from American companies. They are maintaining consistency with the U.S. government. So they are actually aligned with the U.S. government. We are different. We are more diversified. It's possible for us to overcome our difficulties by ourselves without help. Are you saying Chinese companies don't behave? No, this is not what I mean. I don't know why an American company reports to the U.S. government all the time. We don't need to do that. We just pay the taxes. The export ban um, against Huawei is already having an effect on American companies that sell to you. We're seeing it in their forecasts for revenue profits in the year ahead. Are they talking to U.S. officials on Huawei's behalf? Are they trying to lift the export ban or at least win some exemptions? I think, are they able to actually lift this kind of ban? I, I don't know. Attacking Huawei is painful for both sides. So it's revenue, jobs here, and so it is also jobs on the American company side. They are a listed company. It's a bigger impact. We are not a lesser company, so we don't need to show them the same kind of responsibility. It's also a benefit of not being listed. Do you or your executives talk to executives at American companies, your suppliers? Our executives have consensus. Are they advocating on Huawei's behalf? For that, I do not know. What is, how would you characterize, characterize your relationship with Google? Google and us are standing in the same line of interest. If Google systems are not installed in our devices, there would be billions of users lost for Google. And they would also see loss in many aspects. And if we don't have their systems, our revenue would drop too. So there would be things we'd have to shoulder too. So this is an issue of shared interest. Who has more to lose in a trade war, China or the U.S.? 
The trade war has nothing to do with me. So how can I know who will lose more? We don't have sales in the U.S. Even if you have 3,000% tariffs added to our sales volumes, that has nothing to do with us, because we do not have any sales operations in the U.S. So I do not care about the trade war between the two powers. If they're energetic enough, they can work on it. But we have not participated in any of it. Mr. An, you are CEO of a global company you have business all over the world. Are you saying that you don't care about the outcome of the trade war and you have no thoughts on it? I don't. The trade war is about grain, etc. And for me, I can eat less of that grain. I don't need to care about that much. Do you care about your ability to do business in the United States? I think in a relatively long duration of time, it's not possible for us to conduct business operations in the U.S. So I actually don't care whether they allow us to go. And even if the U.S. is open to us for business operations, we might not be able to conduct business. I should say that building a system like that needs a long time. So, Mr. Ren, for many years you didn't speak to media. In the last six months you've spoken to many. Why are you here sitting down with me? a journalist at an American organization if you don't care about the trade war and you don't care about doing business in the U.S.? First of all, last year after December, global media had almost 90 percent of coverage of us that was negative. And I don't think it was 100 percent, but if it's less than 100 percent, it would have reached 90 percent. So our PR department needs to help us tell the world who Huawei is. So in the media, because I do not meet with the media, so the media is curious. And as we talk, we have less negative coverage. I think we have about 20 percent to 30 percent of the positive coverage. And so people know us better. We do know we need to do that. I will talk a lot in the next six months. I will continue to amplify these positive forces. And I kind of like this interview today. Because you've been asking sharp questions. You are not avoiding any questions. I also answer all the questions sincerely. I have not avoided anything, I'm telling the truth, and I'm sincere, so it can show the American people a true Huawei, because they don't know us well enough. And many Americans have never been to China. And when they watch movies, they still see China a hundred years ago. They see that we're still in the Qing dynasty. Very conservative, still wearing the big braided hair. Mr. And that's not why I'm here to counter any stereotypes. I'm here to ask questions of you. You said that you haven't avoided any of my questions. With all due respect, I disagree. You have avoided many of my questions, such as what is your strategy to make up for the expert ban that is hurting, already hurting your business? I did answer the questions because we don't have to expand on the chipsets. We have our own chipsets. As to the OS, the OS will become mature. You didn't tell me what makes you optimistic that your customers around the world will accept your operating system and not the Android operating system. If you look at the actual situations, we have not seen any shrinking of the orders placed. Major orders are in the network connectivity product, our major products. We have not seen actually almost none, no shrinking of orders. And there was news that everybody was saying that we've provisioned our 5G system. You can still see news of that. So it's not impacting us. Some impact on the consumer business, but the CBG business is not the most major business area. So it has some impact, but it does not really matter. Consumer business is not the most major business of Huawei. I've seen your financial results. It is the fastest growing and now the biggest part of Huawei. Why does the U.S. attack our 5G? Why not devices? It's because we are very advanced in 5G, and 5G is not consumer devices. 5G is the network connectivity equipment. 
So the most important part in defense would be the connectivity devices and equipment and the position we have in the world. Mr. Ren, I know that transparency is very important to you. That's why you're sitting down with me and other members of the media. Why is Huawei, does it continue to be a private company? Have you considered becoming a public company? If we weren't an illicit company, do you think we'd still be able to survive? Fluctuation in stock market might be huge. Then a big drop of the stock price was incurring great loss. We still have our dream. We'd still like to realize our dream. And being a part of the company is much more meaningful and better than illicit company. An illicit company needs to focus on the short-term financial statement, not invest into long-term. We do not care that much about the short-term financial statements. So we can invest for 10 years, 20 years' time, and so we can keep our advance and leading position and we continue to be leading. Companies much bigger than yours have not only survived hard times but thrived as public companies. And Huawei has a transparency issue in the U.S. So I, I'm not sure I'm understanding your argument as to why you wouldn't become a public company. And talking about research and development, there are also companies bigger than yours that are public that spend just as much, if not more, on R&D. Then why do they attack 5G if they are better? They're probably on 5G. Why do they care as much about Huawei's 5G? Let me give you an example. Facebook in the United States is under attack. Their share price has continued to grow as they adjust their business. So why would being a public company prevent Huawei's survival? But we are dedicated to achieve our ideal. If we are listed as a company, then a lot of our employees would have sold the prices and they would choose to leave the company. But now we are fully united, and we have the foundation to weather to tide us over. That's why we choose not to be public. And in terms of R&D investment, indeed the public companies, they are very rich, and maybe we are the poorest tech company. However, in terms of R&D investment, we rank number five around the world. In the future, we will continue to invest more in R&D. Maybe today we might have some financial issues, but we are not cutting our investment in R&D. The R&D investment is still around 15 billion to 20 billion U.S. dollars, and we will not cut the R&D expense. A lot of Huawei's problems at the moment stem from trust issues and transparency and skepticism that Huawei operates separately from the Chinese government. Have you considered creating an autonomous subsidiary outside of China that would be beyond the reach of Chinese law? No. If not, how can you change the perception that Huawei is an extension of the Chinese state? If you think about it, how can 6.5 billion people all be aligned? So as long as we get the recognition from customers, that will be enough for us. We're not trying to get the recognition of 6.5 billion people around the world. History will tell what kind of company Huawei is, and the past 30 years of track record have already proven that. And in the next 30 years, if we are able to survive, history will tell. Why do you have to prove a company by being listed? There are a lot of sham companies and a lot of companies that collapsed or are corrupt. I'm not asking about being listed. I'm talking about creating an autonomous subsidiary outside of China. If that would help your business, if your business continues to suffer around the world and it doesn't stop at a $30 billion hit to revenue, would you consider creating an autonomous subsidiary outside of China if it were to help your business and ensure Huawei survival? Once again, 30 billion U.S. dollars is not a big number. It doesn't matter. And we don't have to change the way we operate. The way to prove that Huawei is a good company is through delivering high-quality services to our customers. We don't want to get the politicians to understand. If they really cannot understand us, why not be a scientist? So, if the politicians cannot understand us fully, we don't need to do things to change their perception. So, under no circumstance would you consider creating an autonomous subsidiary outside of China? Under no circumstance whatsoever? 
We have plenty of subsidiaries outside China. In every country, we abide by local laws and regulations. We have subsidiaries across 170 countries around the world. And they are independent subsidiaries. But setting up those subsidiaries is not trying to prove to politicians. Instead, it's to fully comply with laws, regulations, and the laws of the UN and international laws. So those subsidiaries abide by local laws and regulations. I do not have any intention to prove to politicians. Uh, we have to wrap up soon, but I want to ask you about your daughter, Meng Wanzhou, being held in her own home in Canada, waiting her extradition trial. And while certainly it's an undesirable position, she has access to her homes, to visitors, to her lawyers. The Canadians being detained in China are not getting the same treatment. And from Canada's point of view, they're being treated unfairly. Do you think that's appropriate? First of all, my daughter did not commit any crime. There's no fact to suggest that she has any wrongdoing. And the bank had the full knowledge about the nature of the business, and they had full knowledge of all those business activities. And my daughter was in a cafe and said something to the bank officials, and that was used as some kind of proof. If those evidence and facts were made public, if our lawyers can appear in the court and the prosecution can ask questions, our lawyers can also ask questions, then the case will be very clear. So, once again, the bank had full knowledge of the nature of the issues at hand, and my daughter just said something to the banking officials at a cafe. How could that be used as proof? That is not fair. And we believe the judicial system in the U.S. and Canada are open and transparent. And we believe the case will be resolved. So we'll be patient with the legal proceedings. You believe the system is open and transparent in Canada, but what I asked you is, do you think it's appropriate that she is in her own home with access to visitors and lawyers while the Canadians detained in China are not receiving the same treatment? Do you think that's appropriate? Well, it's an issue with the countries, and I don't care about the country-level issue. I'm focused on patching the holes on the airplane. I don't even have time to attend to my daughter. How would I have time to care about other things at the country level? The governments will deal with those issues at their level. And how would my daughter be related to the issue at the country level? My daughter just said something in the cafe, so I have to talk to the cafe, not the country. We have to talk to the person who had the coffee with Miss Ming. Well, in the Eastern District Court of New York, they should ask people who were there. Do you think that it's appropriate for U.S. companies like Google, Facebook and Twitter to be banned in China while you advocate for access to the U.S. market? No. Restricting Huawei into the U.S. market, well, that is the action taken by sovereign states. What does that have to do with Huawei? You're not advocating for access to the U.S. market? No, that will be a waste of our effort. Would it be a waste of your resources because you are putting a lot of resources into it? Again, you're sitting here with me, you've hired Americans, you've hired lobbyists, your, your executives speak to American media on a regular basis. Well, we invest those resources not to get access to U.S. markets. Instead, we're trying to dispel the misunderstandings in the U.S. Why bother if you don't want access? Because the actions are not just taken within the U.S. The U.S. government has been lobbying a lot of other countries. You see, Mike Pompeo is really tired, going to all these places. And to President Trump mentioned Huawei in a lot of places. So I think they're so tired that they're doing all these things. So we have to say something or make our voice heard in the U.S. Do you care about your access to other markets like Europe and Australia that are now considering their relationships with you? We've been collaborating with customers in European markets for around 20, 30 years. 
Until so far, we have been welcomed in European markets. So we have to contribute more by providing services to the European customers before launching. How important is it for you to keep that access and doesn't that depend on what the U.S. does as they put pressure on their allies to stop doing business with Huawei? Well, I want to ask you, I mean, how much impact does the pressure from the U.S. have on others? We still have a lot of customers who choose Huawei. Despite the heavy pressure, they still trust Huawei. Once this pressure is lifted, then there will be a huge, significant amount of the request of demands coming from customers. And by that time, our question will be, can we have the sufficient capability to answer to all these demands? Mr. Ren, you're already losing customers across the world. Australia has banned Huawei equipment. Australia, in terms of our business, is relatively a small market. It's not even as big as the neighboring city. Even if they welcome us, we might not go there. Europe is a big market and one of your most important. They are considering the same measures. No, no, I don't think so. Europe still welcomes us. Okay, Mr. Ren, thank you very much for being candid and taking this interview. I hope that we can meet again. Me too. I hope that time, the plane has been fixed and will not chop and the plane is still flying. At that time, I will invite you again.